Call us meeting in order. Tonight we're going to be led in the pledge by Miss Tommy Bear. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, this first meeting after spring break. I, I trust everybody had an enjoyable time being off. Uh, doesn't look like we have a too hard a uh, agenda here, but uh, we'll go ahead and dive into it. And I'll turn it. Anybody have any questions on the agenda? If, or, or consent agenda before I turn it over, Mr. Odom. Good. All right, Mr. Odom. Okay, nothing on the consent, right? Nothing. Okay. And we got our recognition, which will come, and then uh, presentation, spotlight, the online courses, and the item number 10. Textbook adoption. Textbook adoption report ED 5099, textbook certificate of adoption report ED 2153, and they are on your tabs, which is a, it's a state form. School systems are required to submit textbook adoption annually on forms provided by the Tennessee Department of Education. All textbooks are adopted on a six-year cycle. The local textbook adoption report shows newly adopted textbooks for 2014. Textbook adoption includes K-12 social studies, and the motion for A is recommended approval, motion to approve textbook adoption report ED 5099, a certificate of adoption report, ED 2153 is presented. Um, Thursday night, um, the coordinators, the elementary, the middle, and the high school coordinators are going to be here to talk to you about the process and who they involved in it. We've got some good interaction with some of the uh, publishers this year. Uh, they've taken some of the uh, corrections that um, some of the, the parents Put in, they came and made a presentation, and so uh, they did. Uh, they took that into consideration. Also, the um, committee members found errors in some books and some things like that. And some of the adoptions here are taking that back and said they'll edit their books to make corrections where they were in it. But they can tell you more about that. They met with them on Thursday evening. But you may want to uh, take a look at that. B is really your uh, second, which is your. Um, high school adoption basically on that one so um, this is uh, ED 5196 local adoption of textbooks not on contract because there's so many subjects and textbooks in the state of Tennessee CTE courses AP courses um, IB courses some some uh, the state textbook commission doesn't deal with some titles in those specialty areas and so these are some that's for this this one. So the motion for Rutherford County to request approval for local adoption of textbooks not on contract, not including the official list. Following books to be adopted for the next six years include the rice and including the rice of the following, which Prentice Hall Psychology AP. This is an AP book. Of course, if kids make a certain score on this, it's like a college text, basically is what you're looking at because they get college credit. Uh, plus AP text prep workbook with math psych lab with pearson etext 2015 ap psychology and the 2012 edition is on the state list but 2015 edition will be available by may 2014 and number two current issues and enduring questions 10th edition this is barnett and uh, Bedeau authors bedford freeman work publishers book is for contemporary issues that, that one again is another one but um, they'll be here to explain that to you if you'd like to Roll that till Thursday night if you're ready then, okay, or, or not. Now your tab has um, has all of the books that Tennessee has. So when you look at that spreadsheet, it's really large. But the ones where we type it in is is your selection on those uh, from that list of books. Okay, if I could, I need to understand that better then because I'm looking at the tab okay. and it says submitted by Dr. Phyllis Washington. Is that our selection? Yes. The okay. red, the red, 
in there would be our selection on there. So she just happens to be the coordinator of the ones that actually completes the one. She, she meets with the elementary, she meets with the middle, she meets with the high school and then puts that together. Okay, so where we see in that first section, K through five, and there is one that has under the check column, Basil. Basil is your primary book. And what they did, if you remember, they did not have a book, per se. And so this one happens to be a, um, um, kind of like a weekly reader or something. It's, it's one that will be an ongoing book, uh, or ongoing publication that they get. Um, there's not a set book in the list for the elementary K-5. Okay. So that's a paper edition. It's a paper edition is what it is. Okay. It's consumable, as you can see, and it's, of course, it goes by grades in here, too, very often you can see what they're talking about. The reason you see it listed a number of times is on your right. It's a little bit different book for each grade. Okay. Well, you've got it up there, or as Chris had, and Ms. Marshall yeah. has it. Uh, so that's what, that's what it is. Okay, so when we look at that, and when we're talking about that consumable paper product for the K through five, are we entering into a six-year agreement, or are we entering into a one-year agreement that we would anticipate renewing? We, you can stop it anytime you want to. Stop it anytime. Actually, you've got more flexibility with this one, mm -hmm. because on the others, you've kind of purchased the book to use yeah. six years. Right. Well, you've got this paperback. If it doesn't work out or something like that, and you don't like the content or it's not meeting your standards or that sort of thing, you could stop. Okay. Because you need the way that you pay for it. So. With a subject like history, is there a commitment from the publisher? And we may not know this until we get our uh, committee people that are coming Thursday night. Is there a commitment from the publisher to keep this extra up to date or, you know? Continue? Typically their online version will be up to date. Um, because when we buy a textbook, they give you an online. I, I have not known them in the past to say, after we make these changes, or if you have world history, and, Ukraine is no longer Ukraine. I, there mean, you go. I mean, what you're saying happens. Yeah. Um, they typically make corrections. If that's a book they're keeping, they'll make it on the online edition very often, but not necessarily. They're not going to give you another book. Yeah. This being kind of a unique format, though, being that paper product consumable, conceivably they would uh, well, yeah, rewrite writing, it writing once a year. As they go, I, think. I think they're writing some of that kind of as they go. Because if it were issues, but you're really dealing with kindergarten. What, what, when you look at the standards for kindergarten through third or fourth grade, uh -huh. uh, a lot of it is geography and what is the peninsula, you know, what is an ocean, how many oceans are there if you do in the world, uh, land forms, um, it's kind of map symbols and things like that. It's a little somewhat different content in those lower grades. There's some in there um, that will deal with uh, occasionally there are people groups or something like that in there. As we go on down through the list, though, uh, we'll just take the next section because it's easy to see on the screen. Uh, that's a sixth grade textbook, and we would be selecting that first one, right? Yes. And the others are ones that we considered or state approved, but we're not selecting. Right. I'm interpreting that correctly. Then they can talk to you about that. Sure. Okay. And we had some that didn't, uh, the, the middle school, sixth grade was a middle school. The ones that was the most objectable, I believe, was Holt, and they totally withdrew, so they're not in the list. And Pearson, our group didn't select Pearson. They, they said it had errors, and they found they just didn't like <coughs> the content. So they, they went with a different uh, company, which is a McGraw-Hill, McGraw publication. Okay, Pearson, is the PH? P at Prentice Hall. Okay. Um, There's a cut key at the bottom of all those. Yeah, okay. yeah, it says Prentice Hall Pearson, so maybe it is for Pearson. It, it, they, they've, there's been so many conglomerates mm -hmm. come together now, what you're doing with. Yeah. But that's something you can kind of study if you want to look it over by. 
And if they, they might want to bring a copy of some of these. Uh, Particularly the Thursday new night. format one. Because they, they received sample <coughs> copies of that one, of the new format one. And they should have, they reviewed the book, so they should have a copy of that. I think one of the things that the community uh, has voiced to the board and we should be aware and very likely prepared to potentially hear again on Thursday night is the accuracy but also the stability of that book. Uh, there have been some concerns that we're making a decision that now would have impact for six years. We wouldn't come back and revisit this because of the economics and scale of this, you know, we, we gotta, we got to put a book in place. It's expected lifespan is about six years. It's one of the reasons that we've looked at specifically, could we go to this publisher or that publisher, like a small publisher or some, some unique publication? I don't know that they can because they can't support us for six years. Can they keep that book, you know, in print? They have to bond with the state. They have to sign a bond with the state. Bond too. with the state. So in some of, some of them, if they're too small, yeah. They can't meet the bond requirement to commit themselves to that period of time. Right. So, but there's there's some things that we've found out about that. But the consumable paper product in K through five, and the fact that it seems like like you said they're writing it as they go kind of thing, it does create um, an openness for what we found in some of the textbooks as we've examined ones that we've eliminated, some editorial perspective. Uh, and how then would the board have, uh, or the community, uh, are we gonna get a, you know, an unexpected uh, surprise uh, in the uh, 22nd edition or the you know, volume of the second year that we're using this or something like that because it's kind of getting created as it goes. So I, I would like to see, you know, examples of you that. You know, how often do they get the, each edition of that? Do you remember, recall? We'll have to ask Ms. Bogle and then when they do. That exactly when they come out. You know, we used to, for years, we purchased Weekly Reader, uh, Scholastic Magazine. I, when I was principal, we did that. And, and you may have had some of those yourself. Uh-huh. We received all of them at one time. For the year? Okay. Oh, Unit. okay. 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 So we for will have year. on hand. For one year? For that single year. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, what if, what if you see a problem with it the, the second year? I'm sorry? What if you see a problem with it the second year? They may have asked that question when they come. But if it's, I guess what I'm getting at, if it's something we don't agree with, we're not obligated to it, correct? I'm sorry. I, he, he's saying how much, in other words, how much on the paperback, how much do we have to buy at one time? Do you buy the, typically, hey Jeff, and we've had this, this is not the first time we've had this with elementary books. I mean, some of the kindergarten books and things like that. We ordered them all at one time. This is your adoption, just like our Okay. Yeah. Right. So they right. will not change the contents of, of that textbook without you having the opportunity. Book, yes. Yeah, but I'm talking about that I yearly. I don't want to emphatically say that about the paperwork because that, that probably is more readily changed as, say, borders of countries. Yeah, and, and if it is changed, okay, and, and I, I guess a sociology book would be the one we're most concerned about, not specifically. Well, see, but the, these are only in the lower, see, these are in your very lowest grade. But I guess the question I'm hearing is, if it's changed, does that give you the opportunity to get out of that book uh, that second year if they've, if they've done something drastic to make changes in that book? I, I don't think they I wouldn't think so either, either but... Just check and see. We'll check and see. Try to find or, out. Because that's a concern. Well, are we, uh, are, are, uh, can we put inserts in to contradict what we don't, we find wrong? 
without getting into trouble. If I, if I understand you correctly, for the six years, you'll be able to see the six years worth up front. We'll see that total adoption. Up front. Of the full school year. And, and once again, we're adopting as it sits then for a six year period. And that paper bag, it comes out every year. Yes. Well, they reship it to us. Reship it. That modified. And I would take it they would do that addition. Now, the only things that I would guess that a publisher would change was that borders of countries change or something like that. And, and I'm not certain they'll even do that. Yeah. I'd be surprised if the country printed six, company printed six years worth and then warehoused them. Right. Uh, because yeah. because of costs related so, to, so <coughs> to us and them too. Yeah. And, uh, well, I mean, I, I guess my concern is, is you know, I'd like to know up front what we're obligating ourselves to for six years. Yeah, we'll, let's uh, find out. You know, in case, in case there's something down the line we don't like, you know, I don't want to be <coughs> obligated to sit there and buy it. Yeah. So if we can find that out, that's not a problem. Anybody else? Comments? I'd like to ask a question about B right there, the uh, adoptions not on the state list. Uh, on the two books that we're looking at, what schools will that will use those? It would be where that AP course was taught, which it tends to be. Most of our high schools have those AP courses. Okay. I tell you how how a lot of these books come to play. The, the advanced placement people, college board, right? They, they conduct training. We send our teachers to training for advanced placement because again, they're getting, going to get college credit. Um, so these are more rigorous books and a little higher level. It's just kind of like if you've entered college. These are mostly juniors and seniors, what they are when you look at an AP. So uh, um, when they go to the training, the companies will, will or, the, or AP will say, this is the textbook, this is the book that we recommend We'll basically base our training on, you know. You don't have to go with it very often, you know, necessarily. But typically when you get through with it, it's probably for the standards that they listed for that AP course. Um, they're usually fairly close to that. So the suggestion for it comes from college board, right. basically, AP. I mean, that's, that's what you're talking about. And, and the current issues and enduring questions, that's, the same it goes with that every high school it should be every okay. where basically you have that AP course I mean we got AP and IB right you know like I say it, it would be now you won't have the, the, the school that has the most AP courses is Central Mac right by far and then you in some schools will have less of course at, at what you have at uh, Laverne High now is you have kids using Motlow college books that are taking Motlow credits, so they're actually using a college text too. Now, we do not pick those, basically. Do we approve them? Not necessarily, I don't think, because that's, that is, because Motlow's going to give you the credit for that and give you the dual credit. And, and very often, we don't get to pick what that college is going to honor for their credit. Or else? I guess it's almost assuming some of these kids are approaching a teletude when they're taking their college courses. And I, and I understand how that can be dangerous, too. It's very true. It, it does, I, what I jotted down was just a note to myself that uh, we may want to make an adjustment in policy uh, to give ourselves the ability to have dual enrollment or online. And in such cases, we may need to add into policy that we will accept the textbook and it will be considered, you know, approved 
or, or something like that because those courses typically require, you know, we've got parental consent if we've got a dual enrollment situation, we've got parental consent if we've got, you know, an, an, an online registration, those kind of, of circumstances. I just don't want there to be a, a gap there where this policy says we approve all textbooks and yet we've got a thing over here where we're not. So that was. Typically, typically they make you use their test too. Okay. I mean, the final exam is going to be the one that give you fewer. Even though it might be taught by one of our teachers, like at Laverne High, for some subject, right. but now the U.S. history is taught on Motlow campus. Yes. You know, but it has to be one that's taught on our campus. But typically, they'll make you use their final exam if they're going to issue college credit for it. Now that we've talked about that, you might give the spotlight on education Thursday night. A heads it up, is. somebody might hit them with a question about that. Uh, I think the one is online. The one is on our online courses. I think Thursday night, which part of that's Compass Learning and some of the others okay. that we vetted ourselves. Okay, majority of the charge test. Majority of that. The uh, letter B. The psychology and the current issues, both of these would be considered ninth through twelve grade level. Um, they're really juniors and seniors almost always. Um, but yes, it would be ninth through twelve. That is a high school list, but mostly always those courses are typically juniors and seniors. I was just remembering back to the spreadsheet that we've got in the tab and you know, it kind of tracks across and, and there's this, you know, we're we're using this textbook only a ninth through 12th grader is ever going to have the opportunity to possibly see it, you know, or something like that. Should, so. I mean, that should be. I don't think we offer those in middle school, and you just don't have um, time to do them, even if you do right. them. That'd be good. Uh, number 11, Will. I found some things today. If you want me to update you a little bit as a board, I can do that if you're interested. They're meeting as we're going on. So um, the the uh, uh, voucher bill was withdrawn Thursday, but it may be added back today. We received something a few minutes ago um, that another legislator is talking about adding his amendment onto his bill. So according to the toss thing that I got about an hour ago, both bills are lying on the table. So I don't know which one will which one will survive. Um, the House Finance Subcommittee did not approve the parent trigger bill uh, that proposed to force restructuring or, or charter conversion if 51% of the parents petitioned for a change in a struggling school. So that bill, um, that would have been one of your lowest achievement in the state schools. That bill failed. Uh, the bill to allow county or city funding bodies to line item veto elements of a school board budget that were related to lobbying for public schools has already failed earlier. We saw that, you know, last week or so. Um, the legislature is working on differing House and Senate versions of a bill to change how members of the State Textbook Commission are selected. Um, the House proposal calls for the House and Senate speakers to make two appointments each to the panel and for the governor to appoint five, while the Senate proposal would require that the speaker and the governor to each make three appointments. So uh, their conference committee is going on down there today. So it could be these or a hybrid of the two. You know, I counted 15 bills related to textbooks um, in the legislature when I just kind of went down and looked at it. Most of them were taken off notice or withdrawn, but there'll be some compromise come out of that uh, because they've made it kind of to the final day, but I don't know what it'll look like or who will be appointing members of it. But it, it looks like it's going to be legislators or governor, what it looks like in this case. Um, there's another bill in there. There's a physical activity bill specifies that walking to and from class will not be considered physical activity for the purpose of meeting the minimum of 90 minutes per week of required physical activity for public school students in grades kindergarten through grade 8. There's a bill that you have to have 90 minutes of activity per week. The physical note is not significant. Now, um, <laughs> that's interesting, but one of our issues in Rutherford County is because our elementary and middle schools are so large, um, we may wind up having, this may be another unfunded mandate in some, for us it may take another PE teacher in some instances to do that. Now they'll let you do another combination, especially in elementary school. If you put in the teacher's schedule, the teacher says, you know, I'm going to take them out to play. or 
they do this, that playtime or something like that can count towards that 90 minutes. Jenna Stitzel has to do a report on this every year. And Jenna is the one that's our um, school health the, the coordinator just doing our bids, you know, for walking tracks and all. So she tracks it by school and they report how they do this and all. But I just, we just have to look at it, see what the final um, bill and everything says and, and how, uh, whether we have sufficient teachers in the school or not. But it could cost us some money, you know. I mean, that's the other. Um, there are, as of today, there are ongoing discussions related to park and to Common Core. Um, there's likely to be some compromise agreements and possibly some hybrid solutions to this. But all of that's being discussed today, and it's governors there with them and <coughs> legislators are there with them. And so um, I, I don't know what really that's going to look like today, but uh, all that's ongoing also. I got a uh, nice text message uh, in the middle of the day today uh, from apparently the House floor uh, from one of our representatives, and the uh, representative was expressing that there was a bill in consideration, uh, and he was interested in my perspective on it. Uh, I was very pleased. To I don't think you're the only one that got that. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, nonetheless. I, I don't know who answered that first, but. <laughs> uh, I was very pleased you might want to, to, tell them what the bill to get the opportunity. Uh, it was House Bill uh, 1791, um, permitting a local board of education to, to refuse to accept federal funding for an educational program without a penalty. That the State Department of Education could not exercise a penalty on a school system for not. And sometimes federal funds comes with uh, um, lots of strings attached, you know. And, and uh, we do not apply necessarily for every grant that's offered, just to be honest with you. I mean, you'll see it that sometimes you'll have a little small bit of money and the things that they do to try to accomplish this is just not educationally sound or best to do it. So you have to look at it little by little. But you get in something like the food, the, a federal lunch program where 43% of our students are free or reduced, you'd have trouble turning that down. Or, or what? Could you imagine how many millions of local money it would take to feed those kids if you didn't take that? Sure. Title I, which serves your <coughs> poverty students, lower income students, and several million dollars. Uh, am I memory right? Wasn't it 5.6% of our funds is federal? The other piece of federal, uh, that, that's the two major hot lunch, um, Title I. The other one is Perkins CTE, Career and Technical Education. And very often the equipment we put in a career and technical education classroom is covered under those Perkins funds. And that's how we can do new equipment or replacements or some, something dealing with that. So that's the three, I guess, that would be the largest for us. The, the one positive that has come out of all the swirl of controversy with with Common Core and the assessments and PARC is that we've had more people talking about education, education and curriculum. Than, uh, than I can ever remember. Mm -hmm. And with that being the tool of success for our children and our society, uh, that's a really good thing. And uh, if, it w we, if Tennessee winds up writing its own standards and developing its own assessment, I'm good with that as long as we don't go back to 2001 where, uh, where the standards were so many and, mm -hmm. and, and lack the academic uh, rigor that we all know has to come uh, in, in today's workplace. So uh, it, it's, there's been a lot of talk and a, uh, a lot of heated debate, but, but there has been some positive to come out of all of this mm -hmm. conversation. I agree. In this workshop format, I'll share that the uh, Carl Perkins reauthorization, one of the central debates that's ongoing right now, and we have a unique opportunity uh, with uh, Senator Alexander being the ranking member on the Senate committee, and depending on how the votes go, he could not be there, or mm -hmm. he could be the uh, chairman of that committee uh, uh, for education uh, in, the, in the year to come. 
Um, but the reauthorization of the Carl Perkins bill, one of the debates is what would it be like if we set up a race to the top type of format for Carl Perkins funds that said, bring us your plan for your career and technical uh, department and we've got these monies over there. If we judge your plan worthy, then we'll fund you. Uh, there are a lot of rural or smaller school systems that don't like that at all uh, because they don't find themselves to be competitive at the central office level to be able to write the grants, put together the programs, and go compete for those dollars as opposed to being able to have access to those dollars and have very important, possibly even more critical in rural areas, uh, career and technical training uh, for uh, their students. And so the way that that reauthorization gets written between competitive dollars versus dollars that, that come based on population or based on enrollment or something of that nature, uh, that's, that's uh, a heated discussion right now. And uh, our ability to weigh in on that and express our uh, perspective on it is very uh, appropriate one of the things we heard about the reauthorization of ESEA was, well, if you had been here, you know, when we were writing this, then maybe we could have included some of these ideas. Well, we are at the place right now with Carl Perkins where they're writing this, and our influence can have very uh, uh, significant impact. Um, we typically now just, Kay Nixon writes for reserve grants. Uh, she's good at that, typically. Um, you get so much based upon the number of students in career and technical education courses, some of the Perkins is based upon that average daily membership in those. The reserve grants sounds more like what you're talking about, which is above and beyond. But what they've done recently, and one of the things that's making it more difficult on that, they're wanting you to partner with another school district or something. It's kind of different. That's somewhat difficult for us to do. Now, they're, they're in the Upper Cumberland up area up there where some of those small school districts, you'll have several of those that will um, partner with two counties will go together. And they have a, a Education Center for Career and Technical Education, and the kids from both counties may go to that. But it's a little bit harder for us on the partnership ones than it is with some of the others. But that's out there now, too, that piece. Aaron, are you saying that each district throughout the United States, since Tennessee has 141, that they would, that it would be a race to the top type application for each district? What they expressed was that there is a mindset of the spectrum of competitive dollars versus dollars that are based on enrollment. And they see that moving toward competitive dollars. When they rewrite anything, that the dollars are going to be more in the direction of competitive dollars. As Mr. Odom just explained here, there's already two different pots that are being pulled from. We would see the reauthorization move it more in the competitive dollars if they were unchecked. Uh, you know, and, and that's kind of what they were seeking feedback is, you know, if we move more toward competitive dollars, uh, is that a good thing, or do you like the balance where it's at, or would you like the balance to return? Uh, the mindset in a Washington concept is we like competitive dollars because that's typically fewer dollars, uh, and yet everybody tries for them, and so they have long-reach impact, and they don't really have to give that much money. Sometimes they can turn it over the state and make them do the competitive to keep from having 141 in Tennessee. And you get up in Michigan and some of those places where they do it by township, you got two and 300 oh, school yeah. districts. Yeah. Huge numbers. So. Anybody else? Mr. Blair, if you would, Thursday, hopefully they'll, they'll cut the lights out down there one night this week. And <laughs> There'll be a mad race out of town, too, I suspect. Well, you, thir Thursday, hopefully you can bring us a fi final update. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Holliday, if you have anything on federal. Uh, we'll talk it. Thursday about ESEA possibly getting on the Senate calendar. Okay. Really? Number 
12. Uh, number 12. Number 12 is facilities. Oakland High School's football school scoreboard. Oakland High School principal, Mr. Bill Spurlock, has requested permission to raise funds and install a new digital electronic sound system scoreboard at the Oakland High School football stadium. The overall size of the scoreboard is 26 feet, 11 inches by 26 feet with audio video display, sponsor panels, and score panel. Estimated cost of construction is $200,000 and will be funded through fundraisers by the Oakland End Zone Football Boosters at no cost to the Ruffin County School Board. Construction will start once a substantial portion of the funds are raised. Recommend approval. Motion to approve fundraising and construction of a new digital electronic sound system school board at Oakland High School football field. Funds will be raised by the Oakland end zone boosters at no cost to the board. Is I'll that just, a jumbo Yeah, I'll make, <laughs> uh, I'll, make nice. I'll make a comment. I'll make a comment on it. I, I had the opportunity to go uh, last Thursday uh, out there to see it. Uh, you're talking about something to, something to see. Now, uh, I feel pretty confident uh, John Jones is uh, behind the end, uh, spearheading it, I believe. And uh, I feel pretty confident knowing John that he'll probably, if we approve it from this level, he'll see it through. And uh, it was a pretty, pretty amazing deal to, to see. Now, Knowing if it's worth two hundred thousand, I don't, I don't, I don't have any idea because I don't know anything about it. But uh, uh, hopefully, uh, maybe you can get Mr. Spurlock Thursday, if we'd like to, uh, or Mr. Jones Thursday. You know, let the board see. I mean, they've got uh, it's nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. Well, let me say, as a uh, referee who operated that school board. It's about time. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought all that up, I guess. <laughs> but it, uh, what's that, the gig? Okay. Oh, that looks nice. Well, that is a picture out there. Maybe if, if, it's, if it's okay, uh, that's a good picture. Uh, maybe I can contact uh, Mr. Jones and maybe see if we can get him answering any questions anybody might have. When you do something like this, are you opening it up to ad time to people buying ads to place on that scoreboard during downtime in the game, for instance? Yeah, that's how they fund them. Yeah. So that's how they're going to, uh, perhaps, how one of the ways, methods they'll use to fund this mm -hmm. scoreboard. It's just like. Now, I don't mean ads around the perimeter of the screen. I mean actual ads on the uh, screen. I, I think a lot of, and John will be able to tell us. Uh, okay. Uh, but they've got to have some kind of source What's of revenue, of uh, just like these buildings. Uh, uh, they rent these buildings out to help well, we've pay for them. got signs all over yeah. every uh, baseball. Well, I'm just talking about these, these, facil there. these facilities they're building yeah. uh, to help to help uh, sustain the cost of them and everything. Uh, you know, let, they'll let them have tournaments and stuff like this to help subsidize them. So uh, on this one here, I, I believe uh, some of it is advertising, you know, full-time advertising. Uh, but, you know, it. Uh, I'm sure they'll have some, some kind of rotating thing also, that some kind of type of advertising. I just saw it. I had to leave a little bit early. Uh, I just briefly saw it, but I listened. Uh, uh, I listened to Mr. Jones talk a little bit, and uh, uh, sounds like he's he's got a good plan for it. So. I want to raise this issue, and I don't. I do not want to get in the way of of this because you know the the pride that it'll bring to Oakland High School and uh, to the student body and, uh, and for the football team and, and all those kind of things are wonderful. Um, unfortunately, there is a, uh, a and I'll, I'll check on this before Thursday, there's a possibility of a bill going through Congress at the federal level that would 
take the same restrictions that we see inside a building about sugar sweetened snacks and things of that nature uh, to athletic fields and advertisement there. I don't think that that bill has successfully completed its run and I don't know what the prognosis is that it will. But as we talk about sponsors on something like this, there are two things. The electronic media here allows us to give somebody a prominent place on the electronic media and yet we don't have you know something that we can't change if legislation changes. If we find that our sponsors that are permanent placement there are not food substances or something like that, uh, that might be worth them considering as they think about how we're going to place sponsors uh, on that board. Um, then the other thing that comes to mind is also uh, at our uh, school board convention we heard about uh, celebrating other areas of our school, specifically uh, academics, uh, in areas of, of athletics. You know, if there's a timeout, if there's a, uh, you know, something of that nature, uh, this kind of video, uh, you know, frame of reference would possibly give us the opportunity uh, to highlight uh, an academic achievement or something like that in a high quality, uh, acceptable way that everybody at the stadium gets to see it and uh, and notice not only what we're doing on the field, what we're doing in the classroom as well. Some yeah. of the local TV do a spot on the teams playing. They usually at halftime or something, you see it on TV now about that school, university, or yeah. whatever it is. It's already happening some, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, it is. TV. I can see that Mr. Nipper would probably not vote for this since there's the possibility of instant replay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> they, uh, maybe checking some of those official calls. It'll make me uh, scream him a whole lot. <laughs> he could be on the other side of it and, and, and say, I told you so. Yeah. You know. Yeah, could be. But, uh, like I said, it was something to... You know, we just keep seeing uh, stakeholders step up to the plate to... Uh, to improve facilities overall, not not only athletics but uh, but academics also. You know, so we're this uh, this district is so blessed to to have so many uh, uh, giving stakeholders. Uh, we we approved so many uh, ventures. Uh, you know, like I said, anywhere from athletics to uh, to walking tracks to. Uh, uh, and uh, outdoor amphitheaters, and it's just we're we're really blessed as a district to have so many generous stakeholders that that are that love public education and and sees the value uh, for our children. Anything else? All right, we'll see everybody here tomorrow night at uh, five thirty. And. Uh, Going round two of Mr. Sandvik's budget, I guess. <laughs> Everybody good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're adjourned.